This is every fight to make after UFC Vegas 66, Cannoneer versus Strickland. I'm going to talk about the potential next matchups for every key fighter on the card. Make sure you guys smash that like button. And if you're new, subscribe. And let's talk about our main event winner, Jared Cannoneer. In a very close fight, edged Sean Strickland on a split decision. I personally did see it going towards him. Wouldn't have hated it going the other side. I think it was a real toss-up fight, coin flip type decision. Kenanier by this much gets it done on the cards. He's going to be in an interesting spot because he's in that top three, but I don't think he's fighting somebody ahead of him. He said after the fight in the interview, I want to fight someone ahead of me or for the title. That just makes no sense to me. Adesanya dominated him. Alex Bahia, the champion, probably running it back with Izzy. I doubt the Robert Whitaker fights next. Obviously, there's some other guys around, and the one that I feel like makes the most sense for Jared Cannonier next. It's going to be Marvin Vittori. Now, note, Roman Delidze is fighting Marvin Vittori, so I'm doing a bit of early predicting on this one. I feel like Vittori most likely edges that one out. I think the fight between Cannoneer and Vittori would then make a lot of sense. Both guys have losses to Israel Adesanya. Vittori has a win over Paulo Costa at this point, which is honestly a huge victory. Robert Whitaker dominated both these men. They're top level, but just, you know, Israel Adesanya's Robert Whitaker have their number. How would they do against Alex Pejea? I guess time could potentially tell. I'll be honest, the boogeyman, at least for Jared Cannonier, I think he'd get hurt in that fight potentially against Pejea. But that's early prediction. That's hypothetical. We'll see. I think Marvin Vittori and Jared Cannonier sometime in 2023 would be the fight to make. Obviously, Vittori has a fight in front of him. Does he go out of that fight unscathed or does he take some damage? We'll find out. If Vittori did end up fumbling that fight and losing to Delidze, I could see Jared Cannonier versus Delidze as well. But Cannonier is just kind of in that weird spot where he's lost to two of the top contenders in the weight class. Granted, he hasn't fought the world champion yet, but after a razor thin split decision, I don't think that's going to be warranted in that matchup, even if Israel Adesanya and Pahea, the freaking quadrilogy, doesn't happen. Cannoneer, Vittori, most likely in uh, the second quarter of 2023. Now for Sean Strickland, who took a hard-fought loss, and I mean, he was complaining a lot about the decision. He didn't feel like it should have went against him. He loses the fight on a split. He did have a good amount of strikes that he landed. He looked quality out there. Any questions around the chin are gone. I didn't think that he had any chin issues at all heading even into this fight. I just thought Alex Bahia is the boogeyman, and he caught him with a monster strike. He's still top line. This loss is going to be tough. Granted, he's a young dude. And I mean, of course, Sean Strickland could climb his way back. The matchup that I think makes sense for him is going to be another kind of early prediction. I think it'll be Paulo Costa, who I expect to fight Robert Whitaker. And I think he loses to Robert Whitaker, therefore setting up Sean Strickland, Paulo Costa sometime in 2023. I'd be pretty hyped to see this fight. I don't know. I feel like the trash talk could be pretty good. I do think it'd be a fun striking matchup, and I'd be interested to see how it goes. I really feel like Polo Costa is going to end up fighting Robert Whitaker. I know he's kind of playing it like, no, I'm not fighting him. I haven't signed the deal yet for that Australia card. I think that he will. I think he probably goes out there and loses a decision to Robert Whitaker, and then sometime in the middle of 2023, we go Sean Strickland versus Polo Costa. Of course, the UFC could push Sean Strickland farther back. Another potential matchup that I was considering was Darren Till, but I was like, man, Darren Till might be out for a while he's number 15 in the ranking Sean Strickland still going to be in that top 10 for sure and I mean can I really knock him down bad for a real close split decision loss to Jared Cannonier? I think Strickland versus Paulo Costa is potentially next but of course there's some obstacles to overcome here some hurdles and I, if worst case scenario you told me Darren Till Sean Strickland I don't hate that fight at all I actually like that matchup too but I think realistically it's going to be Sean Strickland Paulo Costa probably in the summertime and I think that'd be a fun fight with uh, some good back and forth trash talk pre-fight and I think the actual matchup would be pretty solid as well let's jump to the breakout star of the card Armand Sarukin we already knew he was extremely good he three owes a monster in Demiris Magulov and now he's in a very interesting spot moving forward because he's not going to really be, what, fighting guys behind him outside of the rankings? No, he just beat his Magulov, who aside from Armand Sarukian might be the scariest guy uh, as far as you guys outside of like the top five go. And maybe even skill set wise, both these dudes might be top five. Sarukian's wrestling is a serious problem. He has a controversial loss 
to Mataj Gamrot. Mataj Gamrot just lost to Benil Dariush, who I think is potentially next for Sarukian. I know it's interesting because you can look at it. Wait, he just beat Mataj Gamrot, who beat Armand Sarukian. A lot of people feel, me included, Sarukian should have won the fight. Also, Benil Dariush, he does have... You know, some refusals of certain matchups, fighting guys that, you know, he considers friends towards the top. He also doesn't really draw in a ton of eyes. Benil Dariush is an incredibly skilled fighter, and I think he would actually be a difficult fight, even for the likes of an Islam Mahachev. Unfortunately, he just doesn't have the marketability. So I assume if Sarukian ready to make a fairly quick turnaround, Benil Dariush ready to get back in there, these two line up with... Could be a top contender fight. I actually like the idea of this being a five-round main event early in 2023. Let's go March, April. And I think you do it for the stakes of fighting for the belt. Yes, Sarukian, you could say, oh, he recently lost to Gamrot. It's a controversial loss. Sarukian himself, he said he doesn't think that was a loss. I don't think it was a loss. Most of the UFC fans don't think it was a loss. And if he, been, if he beats Benil Dariush, I think Sarukian could be right there fighting for the belt, which is crazy because the dude's in his mid-20s and he's already looking like a title threat. And he already fought Islam Makachev and gave him a difficult fight. Imagine them fighting over five rounds. Sarukian is going to be making constant improvements. Very interesting situation, man. I think Armand Sarukian is a problem at this weight class. I think him and Benil Dariush is a huge fight for Dariush. It would be the must win. And then if he beats Armand Sarukian, the kid that's looking like he's next up, okay, we give him that title shot. Let's guarantee the stakes of a title fight for the winner. Or at least, damn, on the side of Benil Dariush. Because he needs some incentive. Because, uh, unfortunately, he's on an absolute tear right now. And he's not getting the love. And I don't think he'll get the love. I would love to see Benil Dariush fight Justin Gaethje, but I doubt those two will end up facing off with one another. I don't think they'd give Armand Sarukian a Justin Gaethje. So to me, sensible matchup. We go Sarukian, Benil Dariush, and I'll tell you guys, I think that would be a hell of a fight, and the winner could probably be fighting for that belt. Let's jump to the side of Demir Magulov, who lost, but I don't think he lost a lot of stock. He got beaten by Sarukian, where Sarukian's strongest with that wrestling. Sarukian finds ways to win. He's got good striking, good grappling. The wrestling is A1. Demiris Magulov is a tremendous fighter, though, and I do think he has still incredible fights ahead of him. In a matchup that I like a lot is actually the Hanato Moicano fight. Moicano, scary dude, as always, an intimidating presence in the fight game is Hanato Moicano. I think that him and Demiris Magulov is a really interesting fight. I feel like Demiris Magulov probably picks him apart from range and wins a decision. But I do think Moicano is deserving of a fight against a really elite level guy. But I don't think you rush him into like that top seven. I just don't see that happening. He's got a bad knockout loss to Faziev not too long ago. Also lost to the likes of Rafael Dos Anjos. So I think we put in Demiris Magulov, Hanato Moicano. I think it's an interesting matchup between these two. Two solid staples, I think, in that lightweight division. I'd early predict is Magulov to win a decision. Though I'll tell you guys straight out. And that, to me, makes sense. Another option I was kind of thinking, maybe we go Dan Hooker. But I'm like, man, I don't think they're going to throw Dan Hooker to his Magulov. I don't think they're going to do Dan Hooker like that. I think there's other matchups and there's more money to be made with the likes of Dan Hooker. Maybe even a Patty Pimblett or Conor McGregor fight for the likes of a damn Dan Hooker just to, uh, you know... Try to give somebody a tune-up or uh, give Patty the chance of a lifetime, which he may fumble on. I think Ismagulov versus Hanato Moicano is a fun fight in 2023. And I think it's probably going to end up happening. Let's jump to a breakout star of the card who had an incredible knockout in the flyweight division. Amir Albazi, who also talks well on the mic. He deserves a quality fight. He didn't fight someone ranked. He fought a debuting guy. He is ranked, I believe, number eight in the world. So I think let's rebook a fight that was supposed to happen. Albazi, Tim Elliott. To me, this fight makes sense. I think it's the one to go towards. I feel like, yes, you could give Albazi someone higher up in the ranks, or I mean, maybe you even look right next to him. You see uh, Manel Kopp, who potentially could be a fight for Albazi. But I think let's rebook the Elliott fight. Let's get him a win against a, you know, a pretty quality guy who's ranked, who's kind of one of the tougher outs for everyone in the flyweight division and gave Mighty Mouse a tough first round many years ago. I feel like Tim Elliott is a great measuring stick to see where your abilities lie. I do expect Albazi to beat him. 
And I think he would probably win a clear unanimous decision over him. And I mean, he has the power, so maybe even he'd knock out a Tim Elliott. But that would be a pretty fun fight, in my opinion. I think we rebook it. Elbezi versus Elliott, impressive over Alessandro Costa. But it's not a win that has, uh, you know, too much stake in it. Because Costa's debuting in the UFC. He's not at that upper echelon. Let's go Elbezi. Tim Elliott, I like that matchup. Next one, Drew Dober knocked out Bobby Green in a hell of a fight. I loved every moment of that fight. And then after, he calls out Jalen Turner, who I think should be next for him. Turner's ranked number 10 in the lightweight division. As long and tall as he is, I think a lot of dudes are going to be dodging that fight. Let's give Drew Dober that chance. He's on a good win streak right now. He's looking impressive as hell with finishing ability. He's obviously crazy durable. It's going to be interesting to see. Can he get past that length of a Jalen Turner? I want to find out. Drew Dover has the power to knock out plenty of guys. And I mean, sleeping Bobby Green, I think you can knock out just about everybody at lightweight if you hit him clean on the chin with a knockout of a game fighter like Bobby Green. You call out Jalen Turner, I think the UFC obliges. I think we'll give him that chance. He's not ranked right now, this being Drew Dover. Jalen Turner at 10. I'm going to give him the chance of a lifetime here. Does the UFC go ahead and do it? Maybe not. Maybe they do Jalen Turner versus uh, the likes of freaking Armand Saruki. And we give Saruki and more of, you know, I guess a lighter, I don't want to call it a tune-up. I don't think Jalen Turner is a tune-up, but a lighter touch. And, you know, if maybe the fight with Dariush wasn't going to happen, they'd say, oh, let's go Saruki and versus Jalen Turner. I don't like that idea. I think you give... Jalen Turner and Drew Dober a chance to really, you know, push forward with, I think, an impressive win in an action-packed fight. I want to see this matchup, even for Jalen Turner. Yeah, he's in the rankings, but aside, you know, from beating, you know, the likes of Brad Riddell, let's not forget Matt Frivola did beat him a while back. Uh, he was up at 170, lost to Luke. I think Drew Dober would actually be a very difficult fight for Jalen Turner, and I'm interested to see these two locked in a cage with one another for 15 minutes. I want to see it. Drew Dober, Jalen Turner, the call-out was made. That is taking advantage of your moment on a big stage, especially after a knockout win like that. Yes, give him what he wants. Drew Dober, Jalen Turner, sign me up. The next guy... Oh my, Alex Caceres, knockout of the night. I mean, no offense to Drew Dober, who landed a brutal knockout. You can't really match it, that high kick. Both guys got insane knockouts, performance of the nights, but that fucking high kick KO was crazy for Alex Caceres. Off balance, high kick, sleeps Julian Arosa. He was also my underdog of the week, so you know I was stoked as hell. But Bruce Leroy is always right there banging on that door towards the top 15. And I really think you got to give him another ranked guy moving forward. Let's go for another longtime UFC veteran, and let's do it. It's Edson Barboza versus Alex Bruce Leroy Caceres. I like the Edson Barboza fight for him. I'd be interested to see how it goes. The better kickboxing, obviously, is with Edson. But it's not like Caceres can't strike, and it's definitely not like Caceres doesn't have some grappling tools as well. I think that Edson Barboza on that two-fight losing streak should fight someone that's outside the ranking, so it can be looked at as the chance of a lifetime for Alex Caceres to beat a legend of the game and break into the rankings. And for Edson Barboza, you're beating a longtime vet with a win. And you're not fighting a ranked guy. Maybe you could consider it a slight tune-up. I don't think it is a tune-up, though. I think it'd be a difficult fight for both men. I see it as the matchup to make next. After that knockout, you ride the high of Alex Caceres. He deserves something big. I think you go Edson Barboza, Alex Bruce Lee, Roy Caceres. And let's see some Bruce Lee shit. I'm all in for that matchup. Love it. Next guy it was Mikhail Olak Jechuk, who just destroyed... Cody Brundage, after he was taken down and then he reverses the position, gets in guard, and he just smashes him with shots, elbow that really started it all. The power Oleg Jacek can generate striking is crazy. He can do it on the ground. He can do it standing up. If he punches you in the face, he's shaking your brain cells. And there's another guy who punches people in the face and rattles their brains too. And it was also the guy Mikhail Oleg Jacek called out. You call somebody out, you get a performance like that, you get him. It's Chris Curtis. Also, I checked Twitter. Chris Curtis said he's in on the matchup. Sign me up for this. It's Southpaw versus, you know, absolute savage Chris Curtis. Both guys actually can fight out of, you know, Southpaw stances too. Chris Curtis, the power in his hands is one shot. Knockout power is some of the best in that middleweight division, especially outside of like the absolute top, like the Alex Pajayas of the world. But damn, both guys got crazy sting in their hands. I think somebody could definitely go to sleep in that fight. I'd be very curious to see it. I want to see Oleg Jacek versus Chris Curtis. I really feel like Oleg Jacek has found his flow, and it's 185 pounds. He was at 205 for a really long time, and I honestly always felt like he was undersized. Now, 
at 185, I think he does his best work. And damn, his power, I think, is even better at 185 pounds. Chris Curtis is in for a fight with that matchup. Oleg Jaychuk might be top 15, top 10 this time next year. And Chris Curtis and Oleg Jaychuk is an action-packed fight that I have to see. Sign me up for the matchups. Yes, please. I want to see these two go after it here. I really think it would be a striker's delight and somebody is going to bed. And I want to find out who. I really do. I think they got to make this fight. Let's go Chris Curtis, Oleg Jaychuk. Battle of the Strikers, dangerous guys with the hands on both sides. And I believe both Southpaws too. So yeah, I'm in. I'm all in for this fight. Make it happen. Oleg Jaychuk versus Chris Curtis. Let's get it. Next fight, Manel Kopp. He got an impressive win. Clear unanimous decision over David Dvorak on the prelims. This guy's ranked the top 10. Actually, he's in that top 10. And he was fighting Dvorak, I believe, was like top 8. And he's on the second fight of the night. Manel Cop after the fight, says, I'm the star boy. I don't need to call anybody out. They got to call me out. My man, take advantage of your platform. You have the chance of a lifetime to have tons of eyes on you. It's the UFC mic. After the fight, you give them whatever you want. You call them out. Somebody, say a name. Say a name. Get people excited for your next fight. Even if you don't get that name, say a name. It gets the fans more interested. Saying I'm the star boy and being cocky about it, I don't like that arrogance, Manel Cop. You're a great fighter. And I like him. I like Manel Cop a lot. He's a monster. But use the platform to your advantage. So I think that was a big mistake. Ultimately, though, impressive win. Cop's dangerous as they come. Incredible power. Explosive as hell. Can grapple. Can strike. Yeah, he's a problem at 125. And I think his next fight is going to be against an action-packed fighter. Danger. Matt Schnell. I think this is the fight that makes the most sense. At first, I was like, man, does it really? But no, it does. This is the matchup. Matt Schnell, yeah, he's got he's to take on the likes of Manel Cobb. We got to do this thing. Sometime in 2023, I do think it would be better if Manel Cobb would have called him out or called somebody out. But yeah, I think Matt Schnell and him are going to throw down. I think this would be like one of those flyweight bangers. I'm going to say early prediction. I go cop knockout. I think that he'd sleep Matt Schnell. But I think it would be an awesome fight. Both guys would put it all on the line. And we got to get this on a main card. UFC, let, let's give Manel Cop a main card fight, please. He doesn't need to be the second fight in the prelims as a ranked flyweight and definitely one of the best in the world. He's definitely one of the most powerful punchers at 125. I want to see Manel Cop versus Matt Schnell in a big spot. I do think Manel Cop might be uh, coming up on a big opportunity with Matt Schnell. And I really feel like this could even be a fight night featured bout of the night. These guys are upper echelon. I know Manel Cop, you know, would be the one that's you know, in the advantageous position. They probably have him as like a minus 300 favorite. And I wouldn't even complain at that because I think there's a pretty good chance he sleeps Matt Schnell. But I'll guarantee you it's going to be an action-packed fight. Yes, please. Manel Cop, Matt Schnell. Let's talk about the last one. It's Saeed Nurmagomedov who got a win after dealing with some adversity against Sadio Kub Kakramanov. He was losing that fight. But those front chokes are crazy. He gets a ninja choke. He snatches necks, man. Saeed Nurmagomedov is dangerous. His submission game is super tricky. But now we know there's going to be guys that can take him down. And they just got to be more cautious with their necks. Because if Sadio Kakramanov wouldn't have put himself in that compromised spot, he would have won a decision there. He looked like he was en route to a win. I think Nurmagomedov takes on another ranked guy. He's ranked 15 in the world as of, you know, before the fight. I don't think his position will really change with the win over an unranked guy. But I think you give him number 14, Jack Shore. Yes, I think throw both these guys to the fire. Both are prospects. Both are really good. Both are towards the top. I think you got to match them up against one another. I know Ricky Simone just beat Jack Shore. So he's probably like, hey, you throwing me Nurmago Medov next? That's a hard fight. Hey, it's dog eat dog. It's the UFC. It's the top 15. I want to see the best versus the best. And this fight right here makes a lot of sense to me. 14 versus 15. Someone's getting bumped from the rankings. I want to find out who it is. I like this fight a ton. And honestly, it's not a crazy uh, matchup as far as like the odds. I, I like uh, Crazy as far as mismatch. Like People see Nurmagomedov, they think it's going to be minus run. No. To me, Jack Shore and Sayyid Nurmagomedov, right now off the top of my head, that's not an easy one to pick. That's a fight. I could see that being super competitive. I think it's going to be. And I think the odds would be near pick'ems. I think they probably give Nurmagomedov slightly the favorite status, but Jack Shore could beat him. I'm all in. I want to see this fight. See Nurmagomedov, Jack Shore. I think we can even do it on that UFC London pay-per-view. Saeed didn't take a lot of damage. Let's get him back out there quick. 
Both these guys want to be the best in the world. Both are game prospects. I think someone's getting booted from the top 15. Let's find out who it is. Sign me up for that matchup. Said Nurmagomedov, Jack Shore. Guys, those are every key match to make after UFC Vegas 66. It's been a hell of a year covering the UFC. Obviously, it's not going to stop every year coming. 2023 is going to be heat for the UFC. Here on the channel, I'm going to be doing live streams, some fun content for the break, but also note, I'm doing the Ryzen versus Bellator breakdowns. I'm giving it that treatment that I did for the UFC. The betting breakdowns, the full card breakdowns, the money line podcast, weigh and recap show, fight companion. It's everything you'd want as a fight fan. So be ready for Ryzen versus Bellator because I think it's going to bring the heat. Obviously, it's not UFC, but it's a nice way to hold us over for the month off from the UFC. Stay tuned on the channel. Smash the likes if you're new. Subscribe. Let me know what you think of the matchups in the comments. If you don't have anything to say, just enjoy the content. As always, drop a W in the chat. Much love, my people, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace, guys.